but the, the carbon goes through the crucible, coal, comes out a diamond, right? The, the caterpillar goes in, comes out the butterfly. Water has a process by which it goes into the earth and becomes crystalline before re-emerging from the earth. But if you don't know that, then you just think H2O is H2O. And if somebody says to you that there's a difference and you don't have the experience in your body of feeling the difference, then you could be like, dude, you're a quack. You're crazy. I've been drinking water my whole life. <laughs> Well, your meaning of crystalline is a structured, crystalline means structured? The what definition happens? of a crystal yeah. is when a molecule or atom mm -hmm. is self-repeating okay. in a lattice work. Okay. So again, one way I like to describe, now what, what shape does water take on preferentially? It's hard to know because it's, it's amorphous until we crystallize it, oh, like octagon. snowflakes. Nice. Not an octagon, close. Uh, hexagon? Hexagon. Forms a hexagon, right? Now, if we could just loosely imagine a hexagonal structure, hexagonal means, of course, composed of hexagons. Like, um, the, my favorite example would have to be a bee comb. Because what we see is like the honeycomb is this six sided shape, bop, 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 stacked on top of each other in this perfect repeating formation, right? Mm -hmm. That's a lattice. Now, that's kind of like how a crystal forms, except instead of being made out of, you know, by bees, it's when a molecule or a chemical does that. And based on whatever structure it forms, we'll see the structure eventually. That's happening on a little micro level. But if we repeat it and repeat it and repeat it, it gets big enough for us to see the structure. So you'll notice every single quartz crystal you've ever touched is six-sided. Count them. Always forms a six-sided shape. Seth, what's, what's the shape of barrels? How many sides do they have? Eight sides. Every crystal has a unique, and all the substances, Seth's a, like a crystallographer. He, Seth, Seth my, my business partner Seth has the ability to um, walk into an area and go, the crystals are there. And they can dig them up and they find them. I never met anyone who can do that. It's amazing. So he's tuned into the crystal energy, right? He's really powerful in that way. Um, what, we, what I've learned from spending time with him, because he's really into crystals and I was never that into it, is that all, every crystal has a unique structure. Now, when it starts, it starts with something called the seed, the seed crystal. Like there's something little there and one molecule of something hooks on and then another one hooks on and they start repeating the pattern. And if it gets big enough, you can pick it up and go, hey, a quartz crystal. And you see the structure. Now we don't see that in water because water is a liquid, right? But we can see it when water crystallizes. So we could say, hey, it's snowing out, but it would also be fair to say, hey, it's solidifying out. Hmm. Or we could say, hey, it's crystallizing out. Would that be a fair way to say it? Yeah. Yeah. What are you walking upon? That crunching noise you hear is crystals. <laughs> <laughs> Right? You build a snowman, what are you doing? You're packing together crystals. These are crystals just like, you know, our Earth. I mean, it's amazing to me. It's, just, it's humbling to me to picture the two gigantic water crystals on either side of the planet. Right? What keeps this place running? Wow. Two giant crystals on either side. Right? We call those the polar ice caps. They're big crystals. Right? If it was like two giant quartz crystals, it'd be like, wow, what is this, sci-fi? We don't think about water. We don't care. We disregard it. Right? We've just... We pushed it away in glorification of fire. So, interestingly, water is this powerful, powerful crystal. We now another interesting. You know, water has a lot of. By the way, water has a lot of anomalies. You guys know what anomaly is? Mm -hmm. Things that just don't make sense. A lot of anomalies with water. In fact, if you're a scientist studying water, like a hydrologist, then there's all these things that are like you don't get because water does very unique things. For instance, what substance can you think of that you can find in all three phases of its matter? Hey, you guys know that saying, all three phases of matter? What are the phases of matter? And what's matter, really? E equals mc squared, right? I know that like none of us are probably physicists, but we all probably know E equals mc squared means energy times mass times the speed of light squared. What that means is Energy, that's basically Einstein's very complex way of saying energy and matter are equal. We now know, right, we can all accept now, because we were told in the books, we can all accept now that this is, it feels solid to us, but it's really made of energy, right? It's just vibrating so slow, and it's like if I touch it, it feels solid. We say the three phases of matter, would it also be fair to say then the three stages of energy? That make sense? Definitely. The faster that the energy vibrates, the more rarefied it becomes. So if it's vibrating slow energy, we call that a solid. If it vibrates more quickly, it becomes a liquid. If it vibrates more quickly, it becomes a gas. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, we find water in our, in our ecosystem. 
When I say in our ecosystem, let me get a little clear. Everybody with me? I don't want to go over people's heads, I want, but I want to push you to the edge stuff. of what we can really handle and hold in our heads. Keep it going. All right, here we go. <laughs> the ecosystem, when I talk about the ecosphere of the ecosystem, what I'm saying is the pressures, like we all know there's barometric pressure here. If we go up into the mountains, the pressure's a little bit lighter. If we go to the ocean, it's a little bit heavier. If we go to uh, Louisiana, which is below sea level in some places, mm -hmm. the pressure will be a little bit higher. But basically, it's pretty close all the same. And the temperature varies here from the kind of freezing Arctic where there's life forms to the Sahara where there's life forms. And that's our range of the ecosphere. We don't have in the ecosphere the temperatures of space or the temperatures of the sun because life can't live there. It wouldn't be in the ecosphere. So in the ecosphere, there's pressure and temperature. Within those ranges, we find water as, we find it as a gas. Yeah, it's in this air right now. It's called humidity. I can feel it. Um, do we find water as a liquid? Do we find uh, water as a solid? What other substances do we find in there? Three phases of matter in, in the natural world at the pressures and temperatures. It's a very unique substance. It can exist in all three states of its energy or all three states of its matter in the ecosystem. That's unique because other substances don't do that. Yeah. Okay, so you could be, you, we could take this glass right now. If I heat this up long enough, what's gonna happen? It's gonna go from solid to what? A liquid, it'll start to flow, molten glass. As soon as we remove the heat, solid again. It's gonna freeze right back up. This is frozen, by the way, right? That's another way to say this? We think of frozen meaning cold, but it doesn't. It means that it's solid. So this is frozen. This is frozen glass. Wow. Right? If we lived on another planet, glass would exist as a liquid. If we lived in a warmer place like Venus, glass would be a liquid. And it, you'd be like, oh, on Earth, all the glass is frozen. We don't think of it like that. See how this is all perspective-based? Yeah. We have funny perspectives about matter, right? We can shift that if we allow our minds to kind of wrap around these ideas. They're hard to grasp, but they can be felt. Okay, if we heat this up, it will become a liquid. If we continued to heat it, what would happen? Yes. It would become a gas. Now, that's hard to conceive, like gaseous glass, but it's true, right? It would volatilize, we call that. It would become gas. But that's only going to happen if we add heat or change the pressure. If we threw this into space, does space have a lot of pressure? No. What happens in space if you're not in a pressurized suit? Does anyone know? You well, explode. You explode. See, you're held together by pressure. See, air is heavy. Anyone know what 100 cubic feet of air weighs? Eight pounds. Eight pounds, 100 cubic feet. If we calculated, we could measure the weight of the air in this building, and it would be like, whoa, that's heavy. And actually, there's like five miles of air above us. And it's holding our bodies together. If a person goes into space, there's nothing to hold you together. There's nothing pushing in on the sides. So your fish tank would go hmm. That makes sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pressure so holds this together. Yeah. If we brought this glass into space, it would come apart. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. But at the pressure and temperature of Earth, it's all held in the balances we're accustomed to. Water is this unique substance that has the ability, or we could say the consciousness, to exist in all three phases of matter because it has mastered itself. Mm. Does that make sense? Some of us, for instance, get in a bad mood and maybe have a hard time getting back in a good mood. We haven't mastered ourselves yet. If we were mastered, we could shift back and forth between all the phases of ourselves. Water can do that. Other substances can't do that here, not in the ecosystem. And when we say the ecosystem, what are we even really talking about except we're talking about water? Because you don't have an ecosystem without water because everything living in the ecosystem is made of. It's all about water. I mean, it's really all about water. We made it all about food in our little scene, and that's cool for a while, but then it gets like, wait, it's actually really about the water. I mean, our food's actually just made out of water anyway. Yeah. So interestingly, water's really anomalous, and we are beginning to understand scientifically, and it's been known for a while, that water is like this crystal conductor of information. Because as we explored earlier, what, and, and we can go deeper too, what makes a computer chip? You guys ever think about like, how is information actually stored on a computer chip? It's like, I can't even, I'm a pretty smart guy in some ways, but I don't get that at all. But I do know that it works on silicon crystals. What's silicon crystals? We talked about that earlier. What's that substance called? Quartz. You realize that your computer works on quartz? It's quartz crystal. Your computer works because of a quartz crystal. And you so picture that motherboard, that computer chip of crystal and quartz with little pathways of gold, silver, and platinum. <laughs> now, does that sound sci-fi or like new agey? Like, you know, you go to like the new age convention and they're like, 
It's a, it's a quartz crystal and I've wrapped it in, in <laughs> platinum and gold wire to conduct energy. And you're like, wow, yeah, right. And then you're